Hi guys, my name is Min Kim. Welcome to Top Coding session number one. Um, the intention of this video series is to actually solve some top coder problems in real time, well, recorded time, while verbally spewing out all my thoughts to figure out how I come to a solution. Um, so I decided though, prior to this actual run, I would actually go ahead and give it a shot, see how it goes, just in case I'd get completely stumped and then stare at the screen for like 40 minutes and make anybody suffer through that. Um, so I realized that was not a good idea, and I went ahead and did my trial. And I, sure enough, ran into one of those problems where I uh, I sat endlessly on a specific problem. Now, I cruised through the 250-point and 500-point problem, so I think I'm going to make future series um, solving those. And then if anybody has any um, interest in just figuring out the solutions for the 1,000-point problems, I'll probably go ahead and try to discombobulate those as well. Um... So, the main thing about this is, uh, at least the problem that I was working on, is that according to Top Coder Statistics, it shows that 2 of 1,300 people were able to successfully solve this. I was not one of the successful people. I actually had to look at Top Coder's answer. So, um, um, so yeah, it makes me feel a little bit better that, you know, there's not as many people who are actually able to solve it. But um, I think what, it, what I think is really helpful is trying to see the problem and understanding how people did solve it so that you could solve it in the future as well, or for myself. Um, so the code that is uh, tweaked here is going to be open sourced. Um, the slides are also going to be open sourced. There are going to be some slides coming up. And uh, the reason why I'm having some code here, even though the solution is on top coder, is that the solution on top coder is uh, still a little difficult to distill. Uh, the variables are kind of very discreetly named, and it's hard to understand what's actually going on. Um, so again, it'll be all downloadable at ninjacrab.com. If you guys have any questions, feedback, requests, please leave a comment. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And now we'll go into the problem. So the problem first says, uh, Fox CL is learning magical physics. Currently, she studies magic molecules. Each magic molecule consists of some magic atoms. Each magic atom stores some magic power, with different atoms possibly storing different amounts of power. Within the molecule, some pair of atoms are connected by bidirectional magic bonds. Okay, great. So far, starting out pretty easy. Figure out this some sort of looks like some sort of hierarchy, right? You have your um, magic molecule consisting of atoms, and they have power, and the atoms are connected by some sort of bond, bidirectional bond. Um, so now it says CL has a magic molecule formed by n magic atoms. The atom are numbered zero through n minus one, inclusive. You are given int, well, array of int magic power with n elements and then for each i the amount of power stored in the magic atom number i is magic power of i you are also given a list of strings a magic bond with n elements each containing n characters character j of element i of magic bond is y if the magic atoms i and j are connected by magic bond otherwise a character j of element i of magic bond is n so Right about here, I immediately got stumped. So um, to kind of break it down again, just a little bit easier. So um, and also, I just realized uh, it says that the atoms are numbered zero through n minus one, and through most of my slides, I actually have them numbered one through n. Um, so just try to wade through that. But it's just it's just talking about the actual indexing indexing of the array that they're going to provide for you. Um, okay, so now they say that you are given a list of integers with n elements. Um, and then they use this incredibly simplistic verbiage that says for each i. So um, kind of like using a lambda statement and not really distilling it into like normal human understandable English. They're essentially saying that for all of the items inside the magic power um, list, the actual power of the atom corresponds to the index of i. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can break it down any easier than that, but we'll just try to work with that. And the next thing it shows that there's this uh, magic bond, um, it's a string, and the length of each string is n characters, and it just so happens that there's n atoms in there. So uh, we know that the, um, the list of string is kind of correlating to something with that. And finally, character J of element I of magic bond is Y if the magic bond, or if the magic atoms I and J are connected by magic bond. So again, all super confusing up front first for when I read it. Um, and again, if anybody else was able to like figure that out in two shakes of a stick, then you guys are awesome. 
Um, okay, so the next thing is your task is to improve CL's magic molecule. You have to choose a subset S of the n magic atoms so that the following two conditions are met. You are given an int k. The subset S must contain exactly k atoms. For each pair of the given n atoms that are connected by a magic bond, at least one of the two atoms must belong to S. Furthermore, um, so those are the rules of what we're actually trying to produce. So um, I, I, again, like you know, some of the interesting things is um, I guess just trying to figure out what what the question is asking. And in, in this, um, at least for me, it was a little hard to read. And again, I'll, I'll go into a little bit about how what it actually had, um, entails. So the next thing is your goal is to maximize the total magic power stored in the chosen atoms. Compute and return the maximum total amount of power. If it's possible to choose a subset of atom that satisfy the, uh, I'm sorry, if it's impossible to choose a subset of atoms that satisfy the above criteria, return negative one. So for kind of going in reverse note notation, it just seems that though what they're trying to hint is that there's multiple choices that are going to be able to specify a maximum power, so you have a choice of it. Okay, um, so again, kind of looking at this, you have to figure out where exactly you're going to start and how exactly you're going to look at this. And I, you know, I really sat about it and thought about it when I was actually running through it myself. And I thought, okay, you know, there's there's various type of data structures, there's various type of algorithms. What is it? And you know, so I, I take some of the words as clues, and hopefully, you know, maybe some of you have better ideas of what are going to be better clues for you to identify the type of problem. So we'll start with the the, the little um, spreadsheet that, or not spreadsheet, the slides that I got. But you know, um, in a Ron Burgundy-esque style, I'm going to say, is it a graph problem? Um, and what were the clues? Was essentially the whole magic bond. And then if we go back into the problem, we'll see that it has a few examples where it shows uh, the strings that actually show the actual bond formation, right? So, um, so example, the first um, the first example, we see a very simple n y y n. And based upon their whole IJ statement and the whole N statement, we know that the second character of the the string represents that there's an atom that's connected to the first um, uh, first molecule. So, um, sorry, the first molecule is connected to the second molecule because the second character is Y. And then same on the second atom, it shows that the first character is Y. So the second atom is bonded to the first um, atom. I think that sounded right. Okay, so um, again, so looking at that, we, we take some of those examples and say, okay, I think this is going to actually be a graphing problem. And uh, then we figure out how we can go about it. So um, looking at the number of examples that we had, I decided to draw out what the graphs would actually look like. And if we look at the examples, we see that the first graph has um, two magic powers and the, and the bonds that show N, Y, Y, N. Another one that shows the NYN, YNY, blah, 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 blah. And, and there's, there's N examples that you can go through the problem again to look at. Um, oh, and um, also to um, kind of uh, backtrack a little bit, this is Top Coders SRM 571 Div 2 Practice Room Problem. Um, I'll put that in the YouTube title so that uh, in case it wasn't entirely clear. But if you, if you guys want to see where the problem comes from and you guys want to look it up and try to figure out how to do it. So anyways, so when you when we look back again at the list of all the the possible bonds, I just drew the first few examples just so it shows what, what could potentially um, be what the graph actually looks like. Um, okay, so... Once, once you actually look at the graph, um, the next difficult part was, well, what do you do with it, right? So um, we, we kind of have to go revisit back the problem, original problem statement and say, okay, well, you know, we have an idea now of what these molecules look like and what are we looking for, right? So, I mean, the thing that we're absolutely looking for at the end is the total magic power, but still we have to figure out how we're going to get to the magic power. Um, and then so we have to look at what are the rules to find out how we're going to get to the magic power. Um, so in the actual statement it says that you know we're looking for a magic molecule that's going to have a magic power, right? And so there's there's potentially going to be, um, well, and, and again, lay, this is later distilled, but um, somehow you have to determine that there's, there's a possible, there's like, you know, various possibilities of the magic molecule. So, um, all you know is that you're given the actual graph itself and then a K such that it's um, it's specifying how many atoms uh, to do something. 
So again, the, the to do something part is a part that was kind of hard for me to understand. Again, even looking at the code and debugging it over and over. But again, I finally kind of figured it out. So it says you're given an int k, and the subset s must contain exactly k atoms. So essentially, you're building a new magic molecule that's going to have k atoms. Um, and then it says for each pair of the given n atoms that are connected by the magic bond, at least one of those two atoms must belong to s. So this is the part where you have to just read it very carefully, almost compiler-esque. It says, for each pair of the given n items, so meaning the original molecule from the very beginning, it has um, the to some total of all the atoms, period. Um, and they're all connected by this specific graph. So now it's pretty much saying for every single pair, and as every molecule is connected to another molecule, it's talking about the joint of all of the... Um, every single bond actually, right? So it says for each pair, but it really means um, for for each of the magical bonds, right? It's saying that one of the um, atoms of the bond must belong to this new molecule set S. Okay. Um, and again, like it was, it was still hard for me to understand even looking at this. So now let me show some visual representations of what uh, what it actually means. So so now that we see this uh, list of graphs. We, uh, I took the very first sample because I thought it was kind of the most simple one. Um, and it says k equals to 1 for the first example on the left hand side. And we have our very simple graph that shows there are three, um, three atoms connected by two bonds. Um, atom 1 is connected to atom 2. Atom 2 is connected to atom 3. So um, our k equals 1. And so if, if we are to select the very first atom and then we check uh, we check the edges because the the actual thing that was asking for is are all of the edges um, um, well, I'm sorry does does the sub does the atom in subset of s satisfy meeting all of the pairs or the bonds okay and so all of the bonds in this example is edge one and edge two right bond one I guess bond two and if we if we specify the very first atom it is in the first edge but it's not in the second edge so it doesn't meet the criteria of the um, the second part that says for each pair it must be connected by um, magic bond at least one of them must belong to S so again it's saying it has to be every single um, edge of the original atom so it has to be both the edges so then we go through this and I, I kinda did a reverse order but if we if we do the third atom while it satisfies the second edge, it doesn't satisfy the first edge. Um, and then um, enumerating through, if, if we actually check the second ver uh, atom, we see that it does actually connect to the have a bond to the first atom and have a bond to the second atom. So then that's the only possibility when k equals 1 that it actually connects to all of the um, edges. So we calculate the power based upon the atoms that are in our subset. And the atoms that are in our subset at, at, only, at this point is the only the, the second vector, um, sorry, vertex. So the power of that was 1, and thus the result of that is 1. So now if we go to the second example, now it says k equals 2. So if k equals 2, and we just take the first vector of the first um, edge, ver vertex, sorry, and then the second vertex, um, or I guess the second atom, period, right? Um, it it connects both the edge one and edge two because vector two connects to edge two. I'm gonna mix up the whole vector vertexing all through the entire video so you guys can ding me all you want. Um, but just you know, I use them interchangeably even though technically it's the the def pure definition or not. Anyways, so now if we go back to atom, uh, this the the second example. Um, of this uh, of this diagram, if we take um, vertex one and vertex three, it satisfies edge one and edge three. I'm sorry, edge two. And then again, the last one also satisfies edge one and edge two. So all of them satisfy edge one and edge two. So then the next goal is well, now that we have a number of permutations, we have to say, well, which one has the highest power? So if we calculate the sum of the first two atoms, we get 101. We calculate the sum of the second two atoms, we get 200, and calculate the sum of the third, we get 101 as well. So our our winning 
selection for the highest magic power will be the permutation that has vertex 1 and vertex 3. Okay, so now how exactly does the code work? Um, so I will show the code essentially kind of translating it from the original top coder code and then going over a little step-by-step -step diagram of what this thing is actually doing. So the very first thing it does is it kind of sets up with some initialization variables just to set some variables up front and it has a custom class. And then it, it generates a list of um, edges based upon the molecules. So it's just going to do a for loop, uh, a nested for loop, and then um, essentially the, the nested loop is going to start at the index of the outer loop so that way um, it doesn't have to repeat any um, doesn't have to repeat any bonds and thus being just, I guess a little bit more optimized but then it just generates a list of edges after it generates a list of edges then it calls a method to traverse the edges and it also passes k which k again happens to equal the number of atoms that we have in our subset and I called it atoms left to check because again I was just it, it seemed like that's what it meant as I was going through the code over and over so now if our current edge index equals the number of edges um, total then we can calculate the max power off of whatever atoms that we have in our set um, if not then um, what happens it says if the current vertice or I'm sorry if the current edge has a vertice that we've already visited then we know that the edge is satisfied so we can go ahead and check the next edge and then otherwise it's going to say as long as there are still additional atoms or vertices to check it's going to take the current iteration of the edge look at the first uh, ver um, vertex and then look at the second vertex and then traverse based upon um, uh, that permutation of this so again so the code still obviously looks a little um, you know difficult but again I think visualization will really help um, isolate what's happening so um, now we go to our first example so this is as, as after the graph has been made it traverses the first edge so we have edge one highlighted or I guess bolded and it checks the vertex one so vertex one is not in the list um, it's just gonna add vertex one into the list and um, and then it's gonna move on so um, it again it's it, it's gonna check vertex two and I didn't actually um, I didn't actually draw this entire process out because there's like 70 steps in it well maybe not 70 but like probably a good 40 ish steps but I, and I don't want to bore anyone too much for more than I don't know I mean you guys are watching this anyways you must be bored anyways right but um, but yeah I, so um, it will end up checking vertex two, but again, it's trying to it's trying to enumerate through the uh, permutations of possibilities based upon it selecting vertex one first. So when it does select vertex one first, and edge one is um, enumerating through, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to enumerate through edge two. And as it edge uh, enumerates through edge two, vertex one of edge two is already accounted in our subset of S. So we know, okay, well, we can go ahead and move on to the next edge, which our next edge happens to be edge three. And now the first edge of, um, so first vertex of edge three is vertex two. And then when the uh, function enumerates, it realizes that um, the, vertex, the vertices in subset of S now equals K. Um, and, but when it looks at it, it says, okay, well now let me go ahead and check the last edge. Um, so when it checks edge four, um, let me see if I added that. Oh, so I guess it's in the slide. But as, as it checks edge four, um, oh, I'm sorry. So uh, the, the function actually says, um, since the K equals two, um, essentially it, it should be at the last edge already but since it's not at the last edge it knows it's just to go ahead and release because otherwise if it kept recursing through then it's actually just inefficient method so what it does is it says if if I'm if I'm not at the last edge and I've already satisfied my K there's no possible way I could have gone through the entire graph that the, the entire graph is connected by the points of vertices that I have right now so um, it's just gonna recurse out and say okay I'm done so I'm not gonna use vertex 2 of edge 3 um, but then the loop goes through or recurses out of the function and then it checks the other edge 
uh, I'm sorry, the other vertex. So it then checks vertex 4. And when it checks vertex 4, um, it goes into the next part to validate edge 4 now. And if it goes through edge 4, um, vertex 4 is part of edge 4. So now we know that we're good. So edge 1 has been visited, and we have a node that satisfies edge 1. Edge 2 has been visited, so we have a node that satisfies edge 2. Edge 3 has been visited, edge 4 has been visited. All of them have a pro uh, an atom that matches it. So now that we know our calculations, um, well now, now we know that the set of atoms that we have is good so that we can put it in our list of possible um, uh, possible atoms to sum the power on. So, so again, this is the last slide, but essentially the way that the rest of the method would have uh, run through is it would have recursed out after ca computing the power of this being 12. And then instead of starting with um, vertex 1, again, it would have checked the other side, so it would have checked vertex 2 with the power of 7. It would have enumerated through all the edges and then said that, um, um, I guess vertex 3 would have been the only possible edge. And you know, I, th I think I might have misnumbered these. Let me just look at the, uh, let me just look at the original sample because four, seven, five, eight, four, seven, five, eight. No, I guess I guess that's accurate. But let's see what's uh, what's the result here, because I think it's supposedly fifteen, seven, and eight. Hmm. Hmm. What did I do here now? Because selecting edge vertex 2 and vertex 4 will not satisfy all of those. So what did I do? So the first one connects to 2. It does not connect to 3. Oh, that's, that's actually why. OK. So the first edge connects to 2 and 4. Um, so this, this edge actually connects to vertex 1. Um, vertex 1 connects to 2 and 4. So this is actually like this. Um, and then, so... So let's see. Okay, right. And then the power is, is correlating. So vertex 4 has power of 8. Oops. Vertex 3 has power of 5. Okay. So again, if we were to enumerate through this list, um, we would have actually seen that vertex 2 and vertex 4. Uh, so also, by the way, I don't want anyone to think that the algorithm had changed because I just fixed that. Um, my, 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 my picture was a little bit wrong, but still, the algorithm still would have uh, been just fine. And again, if you just tra uh, traversed through that, you would have computed. So again, we, we calculated that the, the power was actually 12, but vertex um, it would have actually selected vertex 1 and vertex 3 and then um, found out that the sum total power would have been 9. And again, if we selected the other vertex 2 and vertex 4, we would have found that the sum power is 15, and that would have been greater. So um, so yeah, so that's, that's essentially how this problem works. Um, you know, it was definitely something that stumped me, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, and again, the next videos that I hope to do was just going to actually be me solving 250 and 500 problem points from code um, Top Coder, because I think that'll be maybe a little bit more interesting. I don't know. Maybe people actually like to see these kind of problems distilled. Um, so if you have any requests, um, I'll go ahead and take a stab. And if you like this video, again, please leave a comment. Um, hopefully this video was um, entertaining and um, whatnot. And hopefully you learned something. Um, so again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.